So I just want to just bless you and just say welcome to tonight. And tonight we're dealing with the topic, resurrection from the dead. Okay, and the, we are dealing with the foundational doctrines. And it's found in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 to 2. And uh, I'm going to get right into the teaching. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord, that you are moving by your spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you love us so much. And Lord, I just pray that you are going to help us get a grip of this topic in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. All right, let's get right into it. Firstly, who will be resurrected? All right, only those who die, firstly. All right, so if you die, you will be resurrected. If you're alive when Jesus Christ comes, you're obviously not going to be re resurrected. All right, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 53. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, okay, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, but we shall be changed. In other words, if, you, if you're alive, you're going to be changed like this, but if you are dead, obviously you're going to be raised. All right. Even if you are not dead at Christ's return, your body will be changed by God's power. It's really important that you realize that even the dead person who gets raised from the dead is going to be changed into a new body. If you're alive when Jesus Christ comes, you are also going to be changed into a new body. Okay, having a new body. Everyone will face God's judgment. In Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22, it says, As it is appointed for men once to die, thereafter, this is the judgment. So in other words, after you, you've died, you are going to go for judgment. And so it's important that we understand if you're a Christian, you are going to be judged by Jesus Christ. If you're unsaved, you're going to be judged by God the Father. Okay, and, we will, and I've dealt with that many times in other places. But I'm dealing now specifically with the topic of being raised from the dead. Who are the ones being raised from the dead and when are you raised from the dead? Now, the resurrection, it was a, a doctrine in the Old Testament. Right through the Old Testament, the oldest book ever written was the book of Job. And from Job, it's mentioned in Job chapter 19, um, in verse 26, it says this, And after my skin is destroyed, thus I know, that is my flesh, I shall see God. So he knew that even if he was destroyed on this earth, he'd be raised again to see God. Okay, so it's right through the entire Bible. As far as, as that, is in, uh, that is concerned. Alright, it was a teaching of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 8 verse 11, I say to you, Many will come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. So he says that these guys are going to be raised from the dead and they're going to be in the kingdom of heaven. Not in the kingdom of earth. You're going to be in heaven. And he says many are going to come and sit with these men and, and solid uh, faith people and be in heaven with them all right now we look at the resurrection of jesus now why is the resurrection of jesus important because the resurrection of jesus he the bible says that he was the first begotten of the brethren in other words he was the first person to be raised from the dead of the christians okay if anybody got raised from the dead before that the Bible had a few people that had died and got raised from the dead before in the Bible. Remember, um, the uh, prophets used to pray for some of the sick uh, that had died and then they raised them from the dead. Okay, there's a few occasions when that happened. Elijah, Elisha, all these guys. Remember that the one guy, uh, they, his body was thrown against the bones and he said he came back to life. All right, so there's a few people that got raised from the dead. But we are talking about a resurrection. In other words, <coughs> sorry, a spiritual resurrection, not only being raised from the dead, but also going into heaven. And so Jesus was the first to give us that example. He got raised from the dead with a new body. Now remember that new body that he got was a spiritual, uh, a new spiritual body, right? Remember that when the fishermen, uh, when the disciples were catching fish, they didn't recognize it was Jesus Christ. And even when Jesus Christ appeared, Thomas even said, listen, I'm going to put my 
hands in the scars. I don't believe that he was raised. Okay, and he had to see it physically. But remember, Jesus could come through walls. Jesus' body could do a lot more than what he could if he was just in the normal um, person as a, as a flesh and blood body. He had his glorified body. The same as we are going to have. Now, I just want to say something. That even the unsaved, the sinner, is also going to get a body. All right? Everybody gets a new body. Some people get a new body and then get put into hell forever. Some get a new body and go to heaven forever. All right? But everybody is going to get a new body um, as part of their resurrection. Okay? Everyone. All right. The resurrection of Christ. The proof of his resurrection was Matthew chapter 28 verse 9. And it says this, And as they went to tell the disciples, behold, Jesus met them, all right, saying, Rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Because they came to check and see, listen, is this really you? And it was really him. All right, the importance of this resurrection. Why was Jesus' resurrection so critical? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 13 to 14, if there was no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. In other words, if Jesus Christ was not raised from the dead, it would not have had any different implication than anybody else. Buddha, Muhammad, anybody else. Not only did Jesus get raised from the dead, but he had a spiritual body. He had a glorified body. It was a physical body. They could touch him. They could feel him. But it was his new body. The same is going to happen. And now you see Paul's writings. He says, if Jesus Christ did not go through this first, then the gospel is null and void. Then everything we teach is null and void because they are teaching that every one of us are also going to be raised and also going to get a body like that. His resurrection declares his deity. Okay, in Romans chapter 1 verse 4. Let me just get that scripture for you. And declared to be the Son of God with the power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. All right, that showed that he was deity. He had a spirit of holiness with him. All right. The resurrection declares certain judgment. In Acts chapter 17, 31. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Now, why is that so significant? Well, God said, because I've raised Jesus from the dead, I'm showing you that I am going to raise everybody, every single person on the planet, all right, as long as they have lived. Every single individual is going to be raised like Jesus Christ, but then they are going to be judged either to hell or to heaven. If you're a Christian, you're going to go to Jesus' judgment throne and you're going to be judged about your rewards. Remember, Jesus Christ has paid the price and you're not going to be judged as to whether you're going to hell or not. All right? And the rest of the world is going to be judged by God the Father and he's going to condemn them to hell. And so it's important that we understand that it is a sign of the judgment that is coming that Jesus Christ got raised from the dead. His resurrection declares the greatness of God's power available to us. Okay? In Ephesians chapter 1, 18 to 20, it says, The eyes of your understanding being lightened, that you may know what is the hope of this calling, and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ, Listen to this. When he raised him from the dead and seated him on the right hand in heavenly places. So what is that saying? It says this. God's power that raised Jesus from the dead has been made available to you and I. That same power that raised him from the dead is available to you and I. 
And so we need to just apply it and we need to walk in it in Jesus' name. So now I want to just go through the orders of resurrections. All right, there's certain order of resurrection that's going to take place. The first resurrection is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 23. But each one his own order. Jesus, the first fruits, afterwards those who are Christ at his coming. So now, firstly, you must see that Jesus Christ was the first one that got raised from the dead. The second lot are the Christians who are dead when, when Jesus Christ comes back. So from the time Jesus was here, okay, to where we are now. From the time Jesus went back up to heaven to where we are now. Anybody who has died as a Christian, they will be the first to be raised from the dead. So where are they now? They are in heaven. They're going to come back and get their physical body. All right. They don't physically die. They are the minute you die, you go straight to heaven. When Jesus Christ comes back on the second coming, they, you're going to come back and you're going to come collect your body that is on the earth. That is part of dust. You're going to get your new body like Jesus Christ. All right. Those Christians do not have a body right now. All right. They are still in the spirit form and they are with, with Jesus Christ right now. The Bible says to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. So if you are a Christian from Jesus' time right up to today, if you died, you are with Jesus Christ if you are a Christian, right? If you're not a Christian, you are in hell waiting to have your body raised so that you can be judged. Okay. Then the third lot is those that are left. Okay, those that are left. Now, when are they going to be raised? That is when Jesus Christ comes right through after the, the whole time is done. Okay. After everything um, has transpired, after the thousand years of peace, when it's the final judgment, every single person is going to be raised that is left. And then they are going to have to stand before God and answer for their, their actions. Okay, so that's now right at the end. So that everybody then is raised and everybody's given a certain, uh, this, their body, their, their uh, supernatural body. Now, I want to focus on the Christians. Okay, we are talking about Christians now. What is so significant about your body, your new body that you're going to get? Why did did Paul put this down as part of the foundational doctrines? He said, listen, this is the foundational doctrines. This is your beginning. This is your starting point. You need to understand these certain, these few doctrines. And you need to understand that I am going to teach you now about the resurrection of the dead. This is Paul now. And Paul goes through and explains the, the resurrection of the dead. And so why is this important for us? Because there's certain things that is going to be in your new body that you need to know. Okay? And all of the scriptures I'm going to give you have come from the teachings of Paul. So I want you to understand that Paul recognized not only the resurrection of the dead, but the issue of you having a new body. What is significant about it? So let's have a look. Number one, they will glorify God. All right, Colossians. Chapter 3, verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So what does that mean? It means you are going to get a body that is in glory form. Just like Jesus Christ has got a glorified body, you are going to have one too. All right, but let's go through some um, specifics about your body that you are going to get. What is going to make it different from the fleshly body that you've got now? Number one, you are raised in incorruption. In other words, you're never going to die. You're never going to get sick. You're never going to age. So if I were you, I'd start trusting God for your perfect looking body, okay? And start saying, God, I need this thing corrected in my body. I don't like this or I do like that. 
Okay, please keep this. This this element is good, you know. And so, there's certain things that you can ask God for. But let's go through them. 1 Corinthians 15.42 says this. Okay, so also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption and it is raised in incorruption. In other words, when you die, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, dust to dust. In other words, you'll return back to the dirt. Now, people have often asked me, listen, uh, Doc, is it okay if I get cremated? Yes, you can get cremated. All right. It's the same as what, how do you explain if somebody goes in a fire? Let's say somebody dies in a fire. You can't sit down and say, oh, shucks, sorry, we can't raise you from the dead because your body got burnt. All right. So there's no way in scripture that says that you have to be buried. That's why you'll see many, many ministers say from dust to dust and from ashes to ashes. So in other words, you can either be buried or you can get cremated. Okay, that's where that statement refers to. And so it doesn't matter. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 15, 42 says that you are going to be raised in an incorruptible form. In other words, you are not going to die. You're never going to die. You're never going to have sickness in your body. Number two, you are going to be raised in glory and power. Your body is going to have glory and power. In other words, glory is always in its fullest form. The most perfect that you can get anything is when we call something glorious. If, give example. If I say to you, here is a beautiful rose, you'll say, look at that rose. It's in its fullest glory. Okay, that rose is in its glory. Whenever you see the word glory, think of this. It is in its best form that it can ever be. Can you imagine a perfect you? Come on. I'm sure many of you have looked in the mirror and said, I don't like this. I don't like that or whatever. Okay. And so I want to tell you right now, you're going to be a perfect you because you're going to be in glory and power. 1 Corinthians 15, 43. It is sown in dishonor and it is raised in glory and it is sown in weakness, but it's raised in power. Your body is going to saturate and ooze the power of God in it. You are not going to be the person that you are on this earth. All right. Your body is going to be a genuine, genuine temple of the Holy Spirit. And it's going to be able to operate on levels that you've never seen before. Number three, it is raised as a spiritual body. All right. 1 Corinthians 15, 44. It is sown in a natural body. But it's raised as a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. My natural body is while I'm on this earth. When I die and I get raised again, I'm going to get a spiritual body. Or if Jesus Christ comes and I'm trusting that I'm part of the rapture. Listen, I can't wait to be part of the rapture. Somebody said to me, and this was the best statement. They said, as soon as the rapture comes, they're going to grab two sinners by the hand. And as they go up, they say, do you get saved or do I let go? It's going to be a tough call, but it's going to be a very interesting one. Look, personally, I don't think you're going to have a chance to be able to do anything. The Bible says that it's going to come as a twinkling of an eye. It's going to come so quick when Jesus Christ comes. But the point is, when I get raised, I'm going to be raised with a spiritual body. I'm going to have the attributes that Jesus Christ has got. So that's going to be absolutely amazing. All right, I bear the image of the heavenly. In other words, 1 Corinthians 15, 49. And it shall be, um, sorry, and, it, and we shall have borne the image of the man of the dust. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Now, what does that mean? It means this. You are going to be able to recognize me as Arthur. But I'm going to have a supernatural body. All right, there's going to be some recognition of who I was. All right, but I'm telling you there's going to be some improvements. A lot of improvements. So what does this have to do with us? Well, remember this, that you are going to be getting a supernatural body because you are going to be reigning with Jesus Christ. You are going to be reigning over the new earth. You're going to be working. You're going to be doing things. 
And so you're going to be moving in a level that we have never, ever had before. And so you need to be ready for your new body. You need to know that I'm going to be resurrected with an absolutely amazing body that is spiritual and full of power. Now, what are the natures of the resurrected of the unbelievers? Right? Now we dealt with what happens with the Christians. What happens to the unbelievers? They suffer shame and everlasting contempt. In Daniel chapter 12 verse 2, many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. I want you to see whenever the Bible speaks about that it's sleeping or you sleep in the dust, it means that you never die. You are just in a different place. Okay, this is speaking about people who have died in the natural now. They are dead. Okay, they shall awake. In other words, they've been raised from the dead. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Right? So when Jesus Christ comes and he raises the Christians up, they're going to go to everlasting life. But some are going to go to shame and everlasting contempt. Listen to this one. This one's tough. They get resurrected to be damned. The unsaved get raised from the dead to be sent straight to hell. John chapter 5 verse 29. And come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life. In other words, if you've done right, you go to heaven. And those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. In other words, they've been raised from the dead and then they've been condemned to hell forever. And so you've got a choice which way you're going to go. And that's always been the choice. All right. Do you serve the Lord Jesus Christ and go to heaven? Or do you serve the world and Satan? You go to hell. Okay. So the choice has always been there for you. But the issue tonight is the following. Which choice do you make? Do you understand what you are dealing with in this situation? Okay, so you are going to go to hell if you have not accepted Jesus Christ. And it's sad to think that somebody just gets raised from the dead just so that and they can get a supernatural body so that they can be in hell forever and be tormented forever. It's really sad. But the choice is ours. All right, so yeah, the Christian's great goal. What is the goal of the Christian? At attain the resurrection from the dead. Your job is to go for that. Philippians chapter 3 verse 11. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Yeah, Paul is talking to the Philippians and he says, listen, if there's anything I can get, I am trusting God that I can get that resurrection from the dead. That even if I'm dead, I am brought back to life to serve God forever. To be there in heaven forever and get my resurrected body. And that's an amazing place to be. All right. Number two, to get a heavenly body. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 1 to 2. And I want you to see this, that Paul wrote this all over the New Testament. Paul understood this. He understood this idea of, listen, I want a resurrected body. I want to do what Jesus Christ does. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 1 and 2. Every one of these scriptures I've given you is what Paul wrote. All right, so he really understood this. Okay, for we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, our physical body is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. What is that? That is your new body, your resurrected body in Jesus' name. <clears throat> so here's the summary. Desire your resurrection so that you can totally be renewed. That every single thing that is a problem in your life, I want you to know that it's not a problem anymore. Jesus Christ is alive. Jesus Christ loves you. And Jesus Christ is caring for you. So this evening, I want you to make that decision. Make it your goal and say, God, let me be part of this resurrection. And I want you to know that this is just the foundation of Christianity. Paul says, listen, this is not a heavy revy. This is 
a very, very basic foundation. You should be saying, God, I thank you that I'm getting a new body. You know, when you've got a loved one who has died and gone on to heaven, you should not be worried about their body and their tent. Say, listen, that thing was not lasting very good. It wasn't operating so hard. Don't worry. They're going to get an awesome body. When Jesus Christ comes back, they're going to get their resurrected body. They're going to get their spiritual body. They're going to get a body full of power, full of glory. Listen to that. Full of glory, knowing that they are in the best state that God could ever make them. And what's more, it is full of power. And I can't wait to see that in operation. I can't wait to see the believers, the body of Christ on the new Jerusalem and on the new earth operating in this level. I'm telling you what, it's going to be miraculous. It's going to be awesome. So I want you to know you've got something to look forward to. You've got something to seek God for. And remember that this all goes down to a simple thing. The Bible says that we need to keep our eyes up there and look for the return of Jesus Christ. Look for the return. He was the first fruits. In other words, he was the first person. He was the first begotten from the dead. He was the last Adam. The first Adam messed up. The second Adam restored everything. So he got raised from the dead and restored everything so that you and I can be raised from the dead. So that we can have the resurrection that we need. That our bodies are going to be changed in Jesus name. So I want to bless you tonight. And I want to say, God bless you. Have a wonderful time. And you go forth with power and might in Jesus' name. So let's pray together. Lord, I thank you tonight as we go. Lord, I pray that you are going to do a supernatural thing in our lives. Lord, I pray that you are going to just bless each and every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, that we will continually just look up. And Lord, that we will focus on you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen.